Well, praise the Lord. Thank God for Jesus today. Thank God for another opportunity. Praise God to share his precious word with you once again. I'm Pastor James A. Dansby, Great Commission Fellowship here in Birmingham, Alabama. Praise God. And he is the answer. Christ is the answer to all of our problems. If we would trust and obey. For the song said there is no other way. Praise God. Just Jesus. Amen. Just Jesus. But I have a word from the Lord just for you today on this, praise God, what is it, Wednesday the 9th, uh, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, praise God, a word for you today and found in the book of 1 Corinthians. And I, again, I invite you to look with me and to uh, examine the scripture for yourself. 1 Corinthians, uh, we're looking at the second chapter there, just two verses, one and two, second chapter, verses one and two. And read thusly, and I, brethren, when I came unto you, he says here, I came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Paul says here, for I determined not to know anything among you uh, except Jesus Christ and him crucified. For I am determined, the apostle Paul says, to know not know anything else among you except that of Jesus Christ and him crucified. And we go, we want to speak from those words, same word, Christ and him crucified. Christ and him crucified. That seemed to be, praise God, the center of Paul's uh, thought, the center of his mind more throughout the scripture, really. But, you know, I have uh, found out in, in uh, I, my efforts to try to uh, encourage people to read the Bible, you know, sometimes I ask people, I say, well, you know, have you read the Bible recently? And, you know, and some people, you know, a lot of people say, well, I just can't understand the Bible. It's too complex for me. I just can't understand the Bible. You know, but, uh, and, you know, understanding is the, uh, you know, best thing in the world, getting an understanding. And uh, even Solomon in Proverbs 4, I believe it's Proverbs 4. Uh, let me let me turn to it quickly. Proverbs 4 there. Uh, Solomon says in verse five, there. look at four and five. He said, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. He said, forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, he says, get wisdom. And with all you're getting, he said, be sure that you get an understanding. So understanding is important, especially when it comes to understanding uh, the word of God. But now, understanding God's word begins, number one, with accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior. And that is repenting of your sins, putting your trust in the Lord, asking the Lord Jesus to come into your heart and save you. That's where understanding the word of God begins. A lot of people are trying to understand God's word, but you hadn't even, praise God, you hadn't even got up the home plate yet. You got to first receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. That puts you on the journey. Praise God of understanding uh, the word of God. And then the Bible says, uh, then the Lord opened your understanding. And uh, praise God, we looked at that on uh, Luke 24 on a couple of lessons back. Where Jesus on the road to Damascus, I mean Emmaus, on the road to Emmaus, uh, with those two brethren that had just recently left Jerusalem, uh, witnessing the crucifixion of Christ, and they were sad. And he, Christ came in with them, and the Bible said he began to show them uh, the scriptures, help them understand the scripture, but he had to open their understanding. And Christ has got to open your understanding also before you can understand the word of God. But that comes through, first of all, repenting of your sins and asking the Lord for forgiveness and asking him to come into your heart. He said, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open up, I'll come in. I'll sup with you and I'll allow you to sup with me. But now after Christ opened our understanding, which is the initial uh, uh, first uh, step there, uh, then uh, the Holy Spirit, praise God, after the initial opening of our understanding, the Holy Spirit, he helps to help us to expand our understanding of God's word. And to grow properly, you need to understand the word of God. To really grow properly, that's so important. And uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians, if you look at 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, uh, uh, first, well, here in, in the first, here in 1 Corinthians, 
Praise God. If we just look back, look back at the text there, First Corinthians, and look at the second uh, uh, chapter again. Let's look at let's let's take it apart. Just kind of pick it apart here. He says, "And our brethren here in that first verse, our brethren, when I came unto you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of the Lord." Praise God. Now, Paul, he's trying to help us here. He's helping us to understand. There are keys to understanding the word of God. And first of all, we see in this verse one here of chapter two of 1 Corinthians, Paul says here that uh, it's important uh, that, uh, uh, that, that we, first of all, we empty ourselves here. He said, I came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of of God. And although he was a Bible scholar, Paul was a Bible scholar without any, any doubt whatsoever, a great orator he was. And he realized that uh, this wasn't uh, enough. It wasn't a recipe for success in preaching and teaching God's word. This by itself, you know, he said, I didn't, I didn't come with flowery speeches and, you know, trying to uh, dazzle you with my ability to speak well, my, uh, you know, my wisdom or not. He said, I, I didn't come with none of that. And that's another key. Praise God to understanding the word of God. First of all, you have to understand that uh, it's not your scholarship. Praise God. Although he was a scholar, it's not your scholarship or your ability to quote scripture that's going to help you here. Praise God. See, God looks at the heart. Man looks at the outward appear. God looks at the heart. But look at that verse two. He says, for I determined not to know anything among you, say, except for Jesus Christ and him crucified. He said, when I came to you people, I didn't come trying to dazzle you and impress you, you with my knowledge and my ability to speak well. I didn't, I didn't come with all of that. Praise God. He said, I only wanted to know one thing. I only, well, I, my, my attention was focused on one thing, and that's Christ and him crucified. In other words, the cross. Paul said, the cross is what I had on my mind, on my heart. In other words, a one-track mind. He understood. Praise God. Paul understood that was a connection between his amazing conversion, and we know how he was converted on the Damascus Road there and that great miracle, but he saw a connection between his miraculous conversion and the cross. So he always seemed to go back to the cross. He saw a connection between his the forgiveness God had given him uh, for persecuting the Christians, killing so many believers, and the cross, that was a connection there. So he kind of, he was clinging to the cross and that should make us curious uh, and make us also look at the cross and uh, his great calling, you know, this high calling that God had uh, uh, put upon him to be one uh, to replace that rogue uh, 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 Judas that wasn't part of the 12. Paul came in to take that position. There had to be 12. So now he saw a connection between his high calling and also the cross. See, he related them, praise God. He understood that the message of the cross was the key, the key to understanding the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Paul believed that if we understood, if we had a good understanding of what the cross is, what the message of the cross is, that it would help us in our understanding. And, 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 and most of all of his letters, all Paul letters, praise God. He he go he, he went back and forward, praise God. He stayed there, uh, uh, basically in, uh, dealing with the cross most all the time. In First Corinthians one seventeen, look there with me quickly there. In one seventeen, now uh, in other words, I'm giving you some example, a few examples. In in the Bible is just completely covered with them. His letters that is, First uh, Corinthians one seventeen and eighteen. Paul said, "For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not." with the wisdom of words, flowery speeches, lest the cross of Christ should be made an honor fact. In other words, if I come in my own ability with my flowery speeches and showing my scholastic ability and my knowledge of the word of God, I would make the cross null and void. He knew something. He knew something that a lot of preachers don't know today. Praise God, because our churches are full of people with itching ears. And all they want somebody just to dazzle them with nice words. But Paul didn't come. He said that wasn't important because if I do that, then the cross would be not effect. The power that comes through the cross would not be able to come to you. So he said in verse 18, for the preaching of the cross to them uh, is to them that perish foolishness. 
He said, but unto us, which are saved, the preaching of the cross is the power of God. That's one example there. Another example, 1 Corinthians 1, go back over to 23. Uh, look at 23 there. Just go over to 23. 1 Corinthians 1, 23, another example of how Paul, you know, stayed around the cross because he, be, he believed it was the key to us understanding the word of God. Uh, look at uh, 123 there. He said, but we preach Christ crucified. Unto the Jew of stumbling block, unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. We preach Christ crucified. See, Christ and him crucified. In other words, we preach the cross, is what Paul said there. And then if you look at uh, Galatians 6, Galatians 6, look at Galatians 6 there, and 14. Paul says here, but God forbid that I should glory save accepting the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. These are just a few examples of how uh, his letters were filled with the cross. He felt that the cross was a key to us, to our understanding the word of God. But you got to understand the cross. What does the cross mean? What does the cross mean? If we can unlock the meaning of the cross, as Paul was able to unlock it, then praise God, we can be the powerhouse that he was and is today. Amen. But understanding the cross is, is very, very important there. Praise God. It was not his gifts that was important to him, and he was very gifted minister. It was not his ability to speak in tongues. And he said, I speak in tongues more than any other. It wasn't about that. Because a lot of us, that's all we want people to do. We don't want to dazzle people with our tongues. He said, it was not my calling. It's not my knowledge. It's not my speaking ability that I'm a great orator. Uh, 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 but uh, uh, my, it's not my popularity with the saints. And he was very popular with the saints of God. But he says, not that. It's just a cross. Huh? Christ and him crucified. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I didn't want to know anything among you except Christ and him crucified. Praise God. So Paul, he leaned heavily on the cross because there uh, you could unlock the, the, the key to bringing us better understanding to the word of God. Now, this doesn't mean that every time that uh, Paul preached or taught uh, the word, the people, he only uh, spoke about the cross and he didn't have anything else to say. It don't mean that. Acts 20, look at Acts 20. He preached a wide variety of things. Acts 20, look at 20 and tw Acts 20, 20 and 21. And Paul said, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but I've showed you, have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews, also to the Greeks. Repentance toward God. He taught repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So he taught more than just the cross, but now the cross is the main point. Hmm? The cross is the key to understanding Christ and him crucified. He understood that. Amen. Look at that 27 verse of that same 20th chapter of Acts there. 27 verse. Paul says, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. So he preached to all, a wide variety of the subjects, the doctrines. But now the important thing was the cross and still is the cross today if we would just understand the power that comes uh, through the cross. Look at 2 Timothy down, 2 Timothy there. He says here in 2 Timothy 3.16, in this familiar passage of scripture, he says all scripture, is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction of righteousness, that the man and woman of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So he said the scriptures, I, I teach it all because uh, uh, it's all uh, uh, through inspiration of God and, and, and it's good doctrine there. He says it's reproof there, correction, instruction, right? All of this is in the word of God. So what am I saying here? I'm saying that I, I don't want you to think that, you know, that's all Paul had in his uh, in his uh, in, in, in his entourage there of scripture, praise God, but the cross was number one. And knowing the cross unlocked great wisdom and knowledge to each and every one of us. All the scriptures are important to the body of Christ. But Paul said that simply the cross gives us a panorama view 
uh, of the Bible, and praise God, it, it opened up, up the information to us and helped us to understand the importance of the cross, the message of the cross, and the rich treasures that we'll discover when we hang around the cross. Praise God, if you hang around the cross, if you study to learn from the cross, Christ crucified, there are uh, abracadabra a treasure of wisdom and knowledge will open up to you. Praise God. And I, I, I'm, I'm a witness to that. Look at 1 John, 1 John uh, 5 and look at 20. Paul said 5 and 20. And we know that the son of God has come, he said, has given us an understanding, important understanding, brothers, that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and he eternal life. He's talking about knowing Christ, a, a, a personal relationship with him, with the works that he accomplished on the cross. That's important. That work that he, what did he do in the, on the cross there? That's the key to understanding the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. Praise God. It's the key to understanding God's will for you and God's way for you. But you got to Put some meditation and some prayer, some time in at the cross, because Paul leaned heavily upon the cross. Uh, Lamentation 1. Look at uh, Jeremiah's Lamentation there. Look at 1 there. Hang around the cross now. Jeremiah, he seemed to kind of, you know, uh, uh, understand what I'm talking about here. Look at uh, 1 and 12. Lamentation, first chapter, 12th verse. He asked a question here. Praise God, or the Lord asked a question through him. Is it nothing to you, all ye that pass by? Just, just imagine you passing by the cross here now, passing by the Lord. Behold and see, he says, behold and see if there be any sorrow like unto my sorrow. Listen to this now. Which is done unto me wherewith the Lord hath afflicted me in the day of his fierce anger. Look what he says here. Praise God. Is it nothing to you? Can you just walk by the cross, pass by, and see it, it, my sorrow? Praise God. And you're not moved by it? Let me tell you something. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, the song said, then the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there, praise God. It was there that God opened our minds and hearts. But Paul had an idea about that cross, though, praise God. Uh, he understood that the treasure of God's wisdom begins to go forth and to come forth into our heart when we understand the power of of the cross, what the cross truly mean to you. Praise God. But a lot of us can look at the cross and, 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 and we don't see anything, but there's a lot to see there. Amen. If we would just spend a little time there in the word, meditating on the cross, huh? His suffering on the cross. Praise God. He promised to, he promised to open our understanding. Yes, he did. Praise God. Uh, back to uh, Luke 24 again, when the Lord uh, uh, met those brothers on the road to Emmaus. Praise God. The Bible says he opened their understanding that they might understand the scripture. Then in that very next verse, that very next verse, that 46th verse, he said to them, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. So he opened their understanding they might understand the cross, the suffering of Christ, that's what we got. Quit looking for these blessings. That's all you want to hear is about blessing. Oh, I'm going to get a blessing. I can see the prophet told me I'm going to get a blessing. Let me tell you something. You need to hang around at the cross. The blessing comes through knowledge and understanding of the cross of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Paul knew that, see? And he was so, he was so mesmerized. Praise God by the cross. Every time he gazed and looked upon the cross of Christ, praise God, he was completely mesmerized. What did Paul, what did, what, what did he see then? What did Paul see as he uh, looked at the cross? What did he really see? Well, he saw God's eternal plan, number one. He saw God's purpose uh, that he uh, had in his heart from the very, very beginning. Second Peter. Look at 2 Peter 3.13. 2 Peter 3.13. Turn quickly. I know I'm going kind of fast, but I'm trying to get it in in my allotted time here. 2 Peter 2.13. He says here, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth 
wherein dwelleth righteousness. He saw God's plan here to repopulate. He saw God destroying this earth because of sin. All this at the cross, you know, destroying because of sin, but rebuilding a new heaven and a new earth wherein the redeemed of God, the saved of God would repopulate that earth. And in Genesis 22, if you look now in Genesis 22, Look at verse number 17 there, 17. It says here, talking to Abraham, that in blessing I will bless thee, and multiply, and I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, as the sea, as the sand which is upon the seashore, thy seed shall possess the gates of thine enemies. So what did he see? New heaven, new earth. He saw the redeemed there. Praise God, that's me and you, the redeemed. In Revelation 1, 5, they called us uh, uh, the ones, it says here, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. These are the ones that going to inhabit that new heaven and the new earth. Praise God. The redeemed, only the redeemed. In, in Romans 8, praise God. In 29, praise God, the apostle Paul says here, it's going to be those who conform to the image of his son, praise God, Jesus Christ, that we might be the, he might be the firstborn. So now those who conform to Christ's image, we're the ones that's going to populate this new heaven and this new earth. Oh, ain't that a great promise? But isn't that good? Huh? Well, but that's just on paper. That can only be fulfilled at the cross though. Huh? Oh yes, God gave the blueprint. The blueprint is going to take place, but the cross is where it all take place. Before the cross, it's all on paper there. It's just on the blueprint. It's like when I was in uh, mechanical drawing in school, uh, we drew up blueprints of a house and whatever, but now that's just a blueprint. Huh? The house ain't built yet. Praise God. Well, God made promises here, but that's the blueprint. The, 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 the culmination of this great promise going to take place only on the cross. It is going to take place only, only on the cross itself. Praise God. But now in, in, Gen, in, uh, in Genesis 4, let's look at Genesis 4 there. Praise God. Only on the cross now. And that's why Paul, he understood the importance of the, of the cross. You know, there are great promises in the word of God. There are great promises in the word of God, but they can only be fulfilled after Calvary at the cross. He kept his eyes on the cross because everything else was pending a work in progress until the cross. Praise God. Paul said, I glory in the cross of Christ in him crucified, he says here. Now, if you look at uh, Genesis uh, 4 and 4, Look at Genesis 4 and 4. It says here, and, and, and Abel, 4 and 4, he also brought the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel's and to his offering. Huh? So now Abel, Abel brought an offering to the Lord, right? Uh, I imagine, uh, it don't tell what kind, but I'm sure it was a uh, probably a, a lamb is probably what he brought to the Lord. And God accepted his sacrifice, and he's going to accept a lot of more sacrifices on down through generations who trust in the Lord and believe in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. But now that promise to Abel is a down payment for all of us. But now it's not going to happen until the cross. Until Christ go to the cross, everything's pending. Everything's on paper. Everything is just a blueprint until the cross. So Paul kept his eyes on the cross. Praise God. God accepted Abel's uh, uh, sacrifice, and he's going to accept our sacrifice, but not without the cross. Not without the cross. So Paul kept his eye on the cross all the time. If we look at uh, John 3, look at John 3, John's Gospel, third chapter, and 35. 3 and 35, it said, the Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. Upon this rock I build my church. Praise God. Everything is in his hand. Everything takes place at the cross. All the promises of the Old Testament, all the scriptures in the Old Testament, everything culminates, everything ends at the cross, uh, begins at the cross. See, all we get in the Old Testament is a down payment, a promise of what's going to happen 
to not just to the few that we see it happen to here in the Old Testament, but to the multitude that no man can number. But it won't happen until the cross. Got to go to the cross. When we go to the cross, then that's when things begin to happen. That's when the church is beginning to be built at the cross. Just the promises before that. If you look at Genesis 3 and uh, 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 3 and 15, scripture that we know, we're all familiar with there. Praise God. God, Lord, so I put him between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Here's the promise of the woman's seed, Christ. Taking away the devil's power, removing his dominion, taking his foot off our neck, off the control over God's people. Praise God, this seed of the woman, Christ Jesus himself, bringing redemption to us, bringing freedom to us, bringing liberty to God's people. Praise God, but it's all on paper right now. At that point, it's on paper. Praise God, but it can't happen until the cross, until Jesus goes to the cross, everything pending. Praise God, everything pending until he paid the final payment. That's why Paul said, when I came among you, brothers, I didn't want to know nothing but Christ and him crucified. That's all he wanted to know. Praise God, everything else was just a dream until the cross. Praise God. Another well-known scripture. If you look at Exodus, look at Exodus 12 there. Can we look at Exodus 12? Praise God, Exodus 12. And, and, and I'm just, to, just to save a little time here, we know about the Passover celebration. Talk about the Passover celebration. Where each home there in Goshen was told to take a lamb, kill that lamb, and let's eat that lamb, but put the blood over your doorpost, and the deaf angel, when he come through, he will bypass you. Praise God. But now that just was a picture of what God was not going to do to just a few people, for a few people, but for a multitude that no man could number. But that couldn't happen, though, until the cross, until Jesus go to the cross. When he made that final payment on the cross, then that enabled me and you, praise God, to come under the umbrella of God's protection, God's great love. But it had to first take place at the cross itself. And then there's, there's Numbers uh, 21. I'm not going to read a lot of that because of time. But that was the brazen serpent that was lifted up in that wilderness. When they were bitten by a serpent, the Lord said, go tell Moses, lift up a serpent, put it on a pole. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And as they looked up to that brazen serpent on that pole, the Bible said that the, the serpent stopped biting them. But that was just a few people. See, a lot of us still being bit now. Some of you hurting right now. But praise God. But let me tell you something. Until you go to the cross, until we believe in the cross, then a lot of people are going to still be bitten and hurt in this world today. But the blessing couldn't be released until Jesus Christ went to the cross himself. And then there's Exodus 17. Praise God, we know that. That's when Paul struck that rock, that smitten rock, and water came out of that rock and gave the people water to drink when they were so thirsty. Praise God. But now that thirstiness is among many people today, thirsting in their soul for relief, for joy, for peace. But you can't really have that. Until you go to the cross, until Christ died on the cross, there couldn't be a, 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 just a complete over a out, outbreak of this satisfaction from soul thirstiness until Christ went to the cross. See, Paul said, when I came among you, brother, I didn't want to know anything but Christ and him crucified, nothing else. Praise God. But, you know, in 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 that uh, in 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 that uh Praise God. In Isaiah 53, well, well, uh, well let's say 1 Corinthians 10 first. Uh, it said Christ was that rock. Praise God. He was that rock. So Christ is the rock that had to be struck. But you know, you, you remember they struck that rock twice, though. Moses struck that rock, rock twice. And because he struck that right rock twice, he God killed him. Didn't God kill him? Praise God. God killed him because he struck the rock twice. Wonder why God killed him for that. Why? Because he was defacing the cross. Huh? You can't hit the rock twice. You only can hit him one time. Praise God. But Moses struck that right rock twice. And then Paul says in Hebrews 9, Nor yet 
that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered to the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he have often suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once, once, once in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. It's appointed that men once to die, but out that the judge. Now watch this. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of men. Just one time. Moses struck that rock twice. Hmm? Why did God kill him? You messing up the cross, man. You messing up the picture. He ain't going to die but one time. So you couldn't struck that. You went against God's word. God killed Moses. Praise God. But not really. We know he came back and saw Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. But praise God. My point is this here. Praise God. The, the, he, the, the Calvary, the cross is where the action is. Everything God said in the Old Testament had to take place on the cross. And if it didn't take place the way God said it take place, then that was a giant problem. You can't smack, smite the rock twice, praise God. And that's what he did. And you know, time, you know, I can go on and on. The tabernacle and all of the things of the tabernacle, the, the altar and all that blood that was shed in the, on, the, on the golden altar there, the labor, uh, the holy place, the holy of holies, the mercy seat, the priesthood. I can go into all that, but all that was just a picture of Christ. That's all that was, a picture of Christ. Huh? But the culmination of all that was at the cross. That's why the cross is so important today. Praise God. To understand the word of God. You got to first accept the cross. Christ suffering in your place and in my place. That's important. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight and now I'm happy. I'm happy all my days days. May God bless you. May God keep you. If you like this video, hit that uh, praise God like button and then go back over here, hit that subscribe button and praise God when we come again. God's will. Praise God. Soon you'll get another word from the Lord. God bless you. May God keep you is my prayer.